Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about bindable events. Really, why you shouldn't be using them. Um, in my last video, I talked about signals and, you know, how good they are and all that. And a lot of the comments were like asking about, you know, why can't you just use bindable events and all that, which is, you know, a fair question. Um, so I thought I'd make this video to really explain like why you should avoid bindable events and, you know, signals and, and why signals are better. So for starters, there, there's a couple reasons why, but we're going to go over the first reason. So I have my signal module here. Um, you can watch the last video to learn about signals and like get the module and all that. And I'll also have the link in the description of this video to get the module. But I have my signal module here and we're just going to make a script real quick. And set it up to, you know, fire with both um, signals and bindable events. So, first off, you know, let's get the signal. And then let's just create a bindable event here, which is instance.new bindable event. And then let's create, you know, a new signal. Um, signal.new, right? And then we're just going to, you know, set both of them up. So, bindable event, dot event, connect. And then new signal connect function and then fire them both right and the first issue with this is whenever you pass tables through bindable events right so let's say we get our table here and we can do it in both um, whenever you pass a table it actually for a bindable event it creates a copy of it basically it recreates the table instead of just using the original table, which is bad for like, you know, it's just, ex it's expensive and it makes it where you can't like edit the original table, right? Which you might need to sometimes. So let's actually create the table here. Let's just call it like things, you know, thing equals one, other thing equals two. And we'll pass that in both. And, Cause I want to compare this. And let's just print, you know, table does equal things, right? And then, yeah, if we just fire this, or, or if we test this, you'll see in the bottom right, true and false. And if we click on the false, you'll see, you know, it, it, it's the bindable event. Um, table doesn't equal things in this case, because again, it's recreating it. You're, you're dealing with a copy of the table, whereas with the signal... It returns true the table is the same it's the original table that you're dealing with um, and we can further show this by like you know doing something to the table so like table dot thing plus plus equals you know five uh, table dot other thing plus equals five and then, like if we wait like three seconds and print things you know oh my gosh I was testing my bad um, yeah, save the, save the changes, whatever. So, you know, then we run it again and we'll see after three seconds, obviously it's going to be the same original table two and one because it's not editing that original table. But if we do it under, you know, the new signal, um, and then just put like nothing there and then run it, you'll see after three seconds, it will give us a table that is changed. Other thing is now seven, thing is now six, because both got five added to them, right? Um, that's the first uh, problem that I have with bindable events, and a lot of people have with bindable events. You know, it, it creates copies, right? So you can't edit the original thing. Now, the other main issue, or, or main reason, I guess, why I, I at least would prefer signals over bindable events is it's just faster. So if we get rid of all this, right? Actually, we don't need to get rid of all of it. Um, if we just get rid of the table part, we don't need, you know, that. Um, yeah. Okay. We're going to basically set up a speed test. So we're going to set up a loop here uh, for 1, 100,000 do, right? Or for I equals, sorry. Uh, one 100,000 we're basically gonna do this a hundred thousand times we're just gonna fire both events with the current time right so bindable event fire and new signal fire right and then we need to get the current time so current time equals os.clock 
And we're using os.clock because you can actually see here it returns elapsed time in seconds since an arbitrary baseline with sub microsecond precision. So it's like the most, you know, precision you can have. And that's what we want in this case because we're testing the time it takes basically for each to fire. And then we're just going to uh, send that current time with both, right? And then we're going to set up variables up here of, you know, uh, total bindable time taken, uh, total signal time taken, right? And then just like to make sure that both are being fired 100,000 times, we can do like total bindable fires, uh, total signal fires, you know, whatever. And then in both, right, we don't have a table anymore. We have like, you know, clock time, I guess, whatever. And we're just going to do, you know, total bindable time taken equals os.clock minus clock time. So, you know, the difference between the current time and the start time, which gives us, you know, the elapsed time. And then total bindable fires, we can just do plus equals one, right? Not, this shouldn't be equal, sorry, plus equals, yeah. Uh, and we'll just do the same for the signals, except total signal time taken and total signal fires, right? And then we'll just wait, you know, a second to make sure everything, you know, happened. And then we'll just print um, bindable, total bindable time taken, divided by 100,000, because we want the average time it takes, right? And it's firing 100,000 times getting the total time, so we divide it by 100,000 to get the time per fire or whatever, like on average. Um, and then, you know, total bindable fires, just to make sure it's 100,000. And then we do the same thing for signal, total signal time taken divided by 100,000, total signal fires, right? And then if we run this, you'll see that is not a 9 because it is scientific notation and this this is what's insane to me guys um this is actually right because this basically means it's you know seven decimals to the right or whatever so one two three four five six seven right this is what it is <laughs> and then compared to bindable that's like, this is insane to me how fast signals are compared to bindables, especially when you do a lot at once. Obviously, like, the, I, I will say, like, the less you fire, the, the more on average signals take, right? Which we can show right here. Um, if we just go again, right? If we do, like, 100, right? Instead of 100,000, you know, and then run it. And you'll see, you know, signal like, okay, on average, yeah, it was, it was a little slower with 100 rather than 100,000. Um, but it's still significantly faster than bindables. And, and this is, like, this is insane to me, right? How fast signals are in comparison. Let's, let's do 10, right? No matter, no matter what you do, the numbers are going to be different, right? It might be slow or whatever, but it's like it's still going to be faster than bindables no matter what look four zeros that's that's five zeros you know again faster right like and then and then let's do let's do just one just just for the sake of it right and let's let's test it with one right oh you see that what is that five zeros compared to four for like it's insane bindables are so much faster like, and it's not even close, right? Or, or, sorry, signals are so much faster than bindables, and it's not even close. Um, and, and yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, it, <laughs> signals are better, okay? Bindable events really should be avoided for the tables, for the speed. And also, just in general, I think, personally, like, personal preference, I think signals, they're just, like ease of use i guess and also just like it just look better to be honest like when it, it looks like a roblox script signal right this you got to do dot event connect this you just got to connect whatever right i don't know um but overall i'd say bindable events really should be avoided and you should use signals that's all from me though um hope you all learned something and i'll catch y'all next time bye